This week on Scam School, we reveal the secrets of Infinite Nim. You'll always win, because you'll have the formula. This episode of Scam School brought to you by Domain.com. Welcome to the only show that doesn't have a companion app, and it doesn't want one. Get out of here with your companion apps, we're sick of them. Scam School, the only show dedicated to social engineering at the bar and on the streets. Hello, beautiful folks, I'm Brian Brushwood, and this week we reveal the fundamental secret to always winning one of our all-time favorite bar games. It's a totally fair game, and yet with this formula, you can always win. Get ready to play Infinite Nim. Hey, that rhymed. Toasting, and yeah, we're drinking. All right, we're back again at the Handlebar. We have Matt Dillahunty again, good to see you. you. And my favorite author of all time, Ryan Holiday, author of Trust Me, I'm Lying, and The Obstacle is the Way. Uh, look, I'm gonna try to blow your pants off. We've talked about very similar games to this, but I wanna say that this is probably the most advanced and the fairest version of this game we've ever done. And if everything goes according to plan, I will still beat you guys at it. So we've got one on this line, three on this line, five on this line, and seven on this line. This is a game called Nim. There's a billion different variations, but in this one, you can take any amount you want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wipe it clean, but you can only take from one row at a time. We're gonna take turns going back and forth, and the loser is the one who takes the last match. Here we go, I'll let you guys go first, go for it. Can our first move be zero? No, that's a very good point, uh. because obviously, once you got to the last one, everyone could just go zero, 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 zero. We can make the math simpler by just like taking the whole bottom row. Yeah, let's do that. All right, fair enough. Pick three. Yep. Three. Oh my. Oh, that was easy. There we go. Ah. So now you're stuck with the last one, all right? So you got the idea. Let's let's play again. Go for it. What where you want to Can begin? we have you go first? Uh yeah, I'll go first. There you go. Well, consider we took all of them the first time. Yeah. And he only took one. We should take all of them but one off the bottom and that leaves him one. You're thinking about this on a whole other level. I'm just like, uh, <laughs> I what's could a be wrong. Though. What's a random no, number? Uh, that's fine. Here, we'll do that. We'll take one. It's a good idea. I'll take one too. I like your style, I'll take one too. And then there we go, one, and then there's one, one, there's there's for you. All right, all right, here we go. Let's set it up one more time. Uh, let's just take one. We'll take one. We'll, we'll mimic Brian's moves. And we'll take a middle, <laughs> the middle one. one. Oh, no! Now what are you going to do? Ah, I've been foiled! Take three from this one. Damn! <laughs> and we're back. We'll Rapid. take one. I'll and take two. Yes. And that's a victory for me. You want to learn this one? Absolutely. You just got to toast me. You know the rules. All right, so years and years and years ago, we did something on Scam School called Advanced Nim, where we had three rows of three, five, and seven, and we taught a way to win the game by memorizing a few pole positions. You didn't really have to understand the logic. All you needed to do is know that if you got to one, four, five, you were in a winning position, or if you had two even rows, you were in a winning position or whatever. But then when somebody sent me this, I was confused because there was an extra row. All of a sudden it was one, three, five, seven as this pyramid. And then I found this amazing guide that made me realize a deeper level to Nim. Instead of just memorizing the win winning positions, it explained to me the logic behind the winning positions. It is advantageous to have the other party go first because when you set this up, it is balanced. Let's say this is the end of the game and it's your turn. Is this a winning turn for you or a winning turn for me? It's a winning turn for us. That's correct, because you have balance, right? 
So what about this? Is this a winning turn for you or a winning turn for me? It's a winning turn for us again. Again, correct, because you have you have balance. So, so you figure out that symmetry favors whoever's turn it is because he can disrupt the symmetry and then whatever they do, they're able to force the last one. It turns out that the original board configuration is balanced, which means whoever doesn't go has an advantage. What you want to do is recognize how many groups of one, two, and four there are, okay? So in this case, you have one group of one in line one. In line two, you have one group of two and one group of line one. Then you've got a single group of four and one, and you have a single group of four and a single group of two and a single group of one. So if you look at this whole thing as a pyramid, you'll notice one and one. These two cancel out. You have two and two. These two cancel out. You have four and four, those two cancel out. And you have one and one, those two cancel out. Everything is balanced now. So no matter how we play, my next response needs to be to bring everything back into balance, okay? So uh, go ahead and make a first move, whatever you want. Okay, so you've removed a singleton. There's different ways we could go now to get me back into balance and to get me in a position of power. But one thing I would like to do is to reduce the number of variables. So since you took one there, I'm gonna eliminate one here. So again, let's do the, the nim count. It's four and four, cancel out. It's two and two, cancel out, and it's one and one. So I'm happy, and now it's your turn again. Maybe we take an odd number, yeah, so that'll, do, that'll do show the change. Try to throw down. me off here. So there's three. Okay, so now we have two and two. I would do this. Right. So now I'm back in power again, because whether you take this one, I can sweep out those two, or whether you take both of them, I can take just one, Right. and you still lose, right? All right, so let's try one more time. Go ahead, uh, pick whatever you want. Do something nutty. Should we take the whole bottom row? Sure. That's what you did the first time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's perfect. Right. So we, all of a sudden we have nothing. So I'm looking at one, one, two, four, and one. Let's reduce it to the simplest version. So I did two ones and one two and two twos. Right, okay. so now it's back to you. There you go, so you take one. So again, uh, uh, there you go, correct, that's what I do. And then no matter what you do right. here, two and two, we're done. What say somebody says, why don't you go first? You do run the risk if they know what's going on of getting the upper hand on you. Right. But I just took one just to see what you guys would do, right? Yeah. So let's let's reverse it now. You guys know the rule, and this is my opening move. This will be the student becoming the master. We got one, three, five, and six now. So there's one one, there's two fours, there's two twos, so we take one off that one and we're imperative. Ooh, that's good. That's really good. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to throw you for a loop. I'll take a bunch of these. Two, there's two, two, and there's a two there, we can take that entire middle row and we're back in parity. All these four because it's two, two, and then one, one. So we're in parity. All right. Okay. <laughs> damn it. I'll take one from these. And then we would take the one. Ah, one, damn it. All right, all right. And then boom. There you go. And I'm and stuck with win. the last one. All right, all right. After one more time. Talk. I demand a rematch, <laughs> sir. Okay, here we go. Um, I will start with that. And so one, one, two, two. So should we get rid of all that? Yes. Well done. And I'll take all of these. Oh, pause, pause, pause. This is great. This is one of those moments you might outthink yourself. Yes. Because on the one hand, you're like, oh, the rules and which one will match, match, match. You are now within striking distance of victory. So you can sweep the board there. And now I'm immediately left with the last one, and you guys are now masters of advanced Standing. NIM for the ages. Now, yes, the math is a little bit intimidating at first. When I first tried this, I lost my first five or six games. But once you get it down, it only takes 20 or 30 minutes practicing with a friend, you will become unbeatable at any version of this game. And there are a lot. As a matter of fact, check out some of the previous versions of NIM by watching some of our Scam School Remix episodes. It's where we take 15 minute episodes and condense it down to just the best three or four minutes. That way you get just the meat. Speaking of meat, you and I should meet each other online by heading over to twitter.com slash wood. And of course, if you want to suggest your favorite bar scam, write me directly at brian at schwood.com. Now don't forget to join us next week because I am going to get struck by radioactive lightning that will give me the power of death. When you get struck by lightning that's radioactive, you you die. That's um it's been real folks. Ah uh, dog on it. <laughs> Hang on. Hey, stop stop doing that. Your wizard powers they're too much. Um welcome to the only show that doesn't have a companion app. And we don't want one. You get rid of your cap. Uh, 
to get just the meat that way. Speaking of which, you and I should be just, wait, speaking of meat? Why would that immediately segue into a Twitter plug? That makes no sense. It's just the meat that way. Speaking of meat, I want to uh, say hi to you. Uh, that's not a segue. You can't just say speaking of a thing and then do another thing. You can't say speaking of sprockets, who likes turtles? Zero, 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 zero.